You're going to change us. You're going to transform us. You're going to make us a blessing to everyone around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, everybody says, amen, amen, amen. I heard, listen, listen. I heard about a young man that was walking through a supermarket to pick up a few things when he noticed an old lady following him around, thinking nothing of it. He ignored her and continued on. Finally, he went to the checkout line, but she got in front of him. Pardon, pardon me. She said, I'm sorry if I'm staring at you. Has, because the, the truth is, it has you made me feel uh, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm staring at you has made you feel uncomfortable. It's just that you look just like my son, the old lady said, who just recently died. I'm very sorry, replied the young man. If there is anything I can do for you. Yes, yes, yes. She said, as I'm leaving, can you say goodbye, mother? It will make me feel so much better. Sure, answered the young man. As the old woman was leaving, he called out, Goodbye, mother! Goodbye, mama! As he stepped up to the checkout counter, he saw that his total was $300. How can that be? He asked. I only purchased a few things. Well, your mother said that you would pay. <laughs> that wasn't a smart lady, right? Are you getting it? <laughs> you know what? He got tricked by the mother. And this has nothing to do with my teaching. No, it has to do. How many believe that the enemy is constantly tricking us? Or you allow me to say another word. How many believe that the enemy is constantly robbing us from the blessing that God has for us? Amen? This teaching today, it has intention to help you to not get robbed by the enemy. So please pay attention. If you remember two weeks ago, I was talking to you about worship and how you and I, we were created to worship him. And you remember I brought the fish and some of you wanted to kill me after I was come pulling out the fish out of the tank, the water tank. Remember? Do you guys still remember? Yes or no? And I was telling you that we were created to worship God like this fish was created to live in the water. But every time we come out, are you with me? We come out out of the environment, the environment where, that we should be part of it, we're going to start to feel suffocated. And we learn that we were created to worship Him. Today, we're going to continue talking a little bit about this. And something that I have learned through all these years is that true worship demands sacrifice. You hear me what I said? Okay, slap somebody that is getting a little bit slip, sleepy around you and say, pay attention to what he said right now. True worship demands sacrifice. We're going to talk about that also next week. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to finish today. But uh, even if you remember the Bible in the Old Testament, God designed it in a way that if you would have come to God, you would have come, you know, with praises, with shouts of joy. The first thing that you would have to do in the Old Testament, before Christ, the people of God needed to do sacrifices. Remember? Even before they enter, or the holy man would enter the holy and the holy of holies. It was the man a sacrifice. True worship will always demand a sacrifice. And we will talk about that also next week. But we can see that also through the word of God. Those that worship Him, they worship Him, or the true worshipers, as I was talking to you two weeks ago, that God is looking for worshipers and worshipers that worship Him in the spirit and what? In truth. Those that worship Him in the Bible, they worship Him in spite of the circumstances. True worshipers in the Word of God, they suffer a lot, but they stay faithful worshiping God and we're going to learn a lot about this one of these men was David I can call many names 
But if there was one that it was a true worshiper, it was David. Now the word show us that David had to suffer a lot. He had to suffer so many times to a point where many of us, if we would, if we would, would have suffered something like David, probably at this point, we would have already denied Jesus. This guy suffered like crazy. He went through periods of a time where all the circumstances around him, they were against him. They told him, you're going to be a king when he was little. But from the appointment, are you with me? To the point when he was going to take the kingdom. Through the process, he has to suffer. He had to suffer a lot. So much. And so many of us, listen, we have received from the anointing to the appointing a lot of tests. Are you with me? He was anointed to be a king. I said a little wrong. For the time he was appointed, the process was very difficult. Amen? But he stayed faithful. Say with me, he stayed faithful. And the idea of my teaching today is to find out in the Word of God how possible he was standing in faithfulness apart from all the circumstances to be against him. It's very simple. There's a verse in the Bible that discovered to us the secret of staying faithful in worship no matter what. Anybody would like to know that? Or two people or not everybody. Anybody would like to know that? See, the secret is in the Word of God. And I want to make sure that you get it today. You see, we need to understand that God is calling us no matter what. But the truth is that you and I, we're going to receive constantly attacks, constantly problems that come against us that is going to affect our emotions. Our what? Our emotions. And you and me, we are humans that we act many times according to our emotions. Like, if I feel happy, I sing a song. Are you with me? If I feel sad, I don't even want to come out, out of the house, because it's a rainy day. We allowed our emotions to control us. Now, our emotions, look at me, are a very critical part of us. But the Bible teaches that you and I... We don't have to depend. Look at me. Emotions should not control us. And there is a part in the Bible that I love it. And I'm going to read it. Psalm 103. It says over here. Please pay attention. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, says David. All my inmost being praise his holy name. <clears throat> it says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your disease? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle? This is one of the most tremendous verses in the Bible. It's Psalm 103, 1 and the next verses. Now, this is a verse that maybe you already heard before. It says, praise, the Lord, praise my soul, the Lord. And many of the verses in the Bible, listen to me. David is talking to God. Many of the Psalms is David worshiping God. Please pay attention. Many of the Psalms is David telling us the circumstances around him. But there is a unique verse right here. Because, oh, are you right? Okay, stay with me. Don't knock like a bear right now, okay? Stick with me. Don't knock like a bear. You want to distract us. Look at me. Here, David is talking to his soul. You pay attention right there. See, David was talking to his own soul. Now, we don't know all the details when he wrote this verse. I believe he was going through a lot of difficult times. Remember, he was being persecuted by Saul for many years. And then once he was a king... He was a struggling a lot during his kingdom, even with his own sons. Remember the whole story. Now, he's going through a lot, and he says this. 
Praise the Lord, my soul. My inmost being, His holy name. And it says again, praise my soul. Why do you think David was saying that? I'm going to explain to you. A true worshiper is the one who has learned that a true sacrifice of praise is given even if you don't feel like doing it. In other words, David learned that this of his emotions had nothing to do with worship. How many want to be blessed by God? Look at me. Oh, three people in the room. How many want to be blessed by God? You want to be blessed by God? Look at me. Your worship, it has to do or is connected with how much you will look from God. So, to many believers, this thing about worshiping God is something that they ignore. Word of God says very clear that you and me, we have to become worship, worship Him in His and in truth. And the only way to do that is to learn that you're going to worship God no matter what. That was the main thing I was teaching you last week, two weeks ago. You're going to worship God what? No matter what. And the good times or what? And the bad times. Because what? We were created to worship Him. Now, you want to feel better? Learn to worship Him. Are you with me? But what about pastor when I don't it. What about, Pastor, when all my circumstances are bad? How can I sing and worship the God I love when everything around me is going upside down? How can I do that? David is going to give us the secret. But before I talk to you about that, let me explain a little bit. The Bible says very clear that you and I, look at me, we were created after the image of God. Okay, let's talk about God. Look at me. God is a that is described with the Trinity. Are you with me? He's got the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our mind is never going to understand. Maybe we can understand at least there is three gods, and the three gods become one. One God. God the Father, God the Son that came to die, and God the Holy Spirit that now is with us. It's not a force. Are you with me? It's the Spirit of God. Now, the three form one. Say, I'm, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. It's very simple. Through life, you can understand. If I will have an egg here, how many guys love to eat eggs? I love to eat eggs, right? Yes? When you have an egg in your hands, and I, I should have prepared this. When you have an egg in your hands, you don't say, when you go to the bodega, I want to egg whites, right? Me and the cholesterol, we don't do well. No. You don't go and say, I want the shell. Because my son wants to do some artwork. You just say, I want what? An egg. And what? An egg. It's the shell, the, white, the egg white, and the what? The yolk. Right? Yeah. You getting it? So the three are becoming what? One what? One egg. Three different parts. The same way it happens with God. It's a simple way to understand. It's God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says that you and I, we were created. Please pay attention. I know it's a lot of information, but you need to get this. We were created after His image. And we were created with body. Everybody, touch your body. Oh, did I have a body? Yes, I do have a body. You're not in the spirit, okay? Touch your body, touch your body. Some of you have a lot of body, like me in some places. That you should or not, all right? Okay. That's your body. And your body hurts, right? When you get hurt, ow, you feel pain, right? That's your body. Now, why is that that you... And then suddenly you start to cry? When somebody experiences a lot of pain in their body, what happens? They start to cry. But and then why sometimes I don't experience pain in my body I experience pain in my body. we call it heart is your heart no that's what we call it but it's your soul are you with me you experience pain in your soul say your soul and your soul nobody here 
experience pain in your soul and you start to go like <laughs> why because the three things are connected together the spirit look at me the spirit that was dead once because before you became christian you have body soul but your spirit was completely death it was completely dead are you with me so once you become a christian that's what the bible says that you become a new believer that you become a new creation that you become born to a new thing but that's when the spirit becomes something fresh something new in you you get it now now the bible says, paul said that he has he had a battle always going on have you ever felt that battle let me explain why battle the battle about paul said the apostle paul the battle that my body wants to do always what is wrong it wants to do what is right and paul said i listen i always want to do what is right but i end up doing what anybody out there anybody like that like you know you always want to do right but somehow you end up doing something wrong like i'm never going to scream my son like that i'm never going to jail my wife and that anybody out there and anybody honest say i'm never going to be like and then you end up what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get depressed if they tell me something and the moment they tell you something you go like <laughs> listen your spirit say everybody spirit. spirit okay say it, spirit. spirit your spirit wants to do what is right but it's your flesh that is constantly pulled you to what is wrong so you allow me to say <clears throat> where is the battle flesh spirit where's the battle where's the battle in the soul guess where your emotions are founded guess where your thoughts are founded in your soul so unless you educate your soul unless you bring your soul under dominion of the holy spirit you always gonna fail are you with me that's what we tell you read the word of god stay in the presence of god pray because by you doing that, your spirit, say your spirit. Your spirit starts to overcome your soul. Are you with me? And that's why David said, now we can understand more clear. Praise the Lord, my soul. He's talking to what? His soul. Okay, you're not getting it. He's talking to what? Okay, I know you heard a little bit about this, but this is a tremendous blessing for many of you that are new. He's speaking to his soul. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, time out, time out. I'm only one person, what are you talking about? Here is the teaching. You don't want to know, I'm not going to tell you. So, you're distracted. Are you ready? Okay, here is the teaching. You have the authority, once you're in Jesus Christ, to tell your soul how you should feel and not your soul how you should feel circumstances you're gonna give a hand clap to god to god i'm excited about this teaching i'm learning today anybody learning today see the circumstances around i'm having a bad day you know i'm having a bad situation in my home how can you praise god pastor tony because i don't let my circumstances my soul tell me how i'm gonna live my life i tell my soul how i'm gonna live my life so david was having a battle he was not feeling like praising god so he command say with me command you gotta learn to command to your soul you come under submission you don't ever forget what god has done for you and you start praising god even if you don't feel like it you better give a hand up to god my friend man I my own dvd and i'm gonna download my itunes today man because listen we need to learn what i'm talking about today oh man i even have pain a little bit take it easy pastor tony you just come out from a big operation Whew. but it says praise the lord my soul all my emotions being praised his holy name he's just speaking hey he's almost like 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 this so you're right there praise the lord no the soul says no i'm depressed the soul is answering you don't know how i feel i'm gonna bring somebody that knows how to act Liz, you're one of the best actors in town so Liz, Liz, see my wire come over here you're one of the best because i'm gonna improvise okay thank you Lizzie. i'm gonna bring also uh, uh yeah i'm sorry man I, i'm gonna be uh, the, yeah man come over here bro
I'm talking about you, bro. <laughs> Steven, come over here. For a moment, I forgot your name, Steven. Uh, he's a professional actor over here. And I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out another actor. I'm going to pull out, Sam, you're another actor. Come over here. Yeah. He's going to discover his talent today, okay? He's going to discover the talent today. He's not only sweet, but he can act today. Okay, here's the thing. See, um, you know what? You, you're the beautiful part, so you're going to, no, we're going to keep you over here in the flesh, okay? And, and listen, you're going to be the soul. Are you with me? And you're going to be... No, actually, I need you on the other side. Sorry. So, Liz, you are the flesh. You are the spirit. You see, they are the three connected. Can you guys hold hands for a minute? They are. And you need to understand this. Once they become Christian, he wants to do always what is right. So, he's pulling to the right direction. He's been always pulling in this direction. So, who is the one that is touring in the middle? The what? The soul. So, as unless... Be careful, Simon is going to get mad with me. Okay. Okay. Unless... Unless... Hold on. Unless he becomes stronger. He becomes what? He is going to be able to overcome him. Because the truth is, how many believe that you and me, we have fed this boy so much? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about this. How, how many believe that we've been fed this boy for a long time? with depression with i do my own with how I many know what i'm talking about yes or no nobody's gonna tell oh, you, i'm just gonna how many of you were like this mm. every time you did that you were fitting this boy okay you were fitting what the flesh oh you know you oh you just didn't tell me that okay you were fitting this guy so this guy was becoming stronger and stronger and stronger okay? So he was pulling the soul. Now, the soul is the thoughts, is this beautiful thing that is in the inside. And, and that's what I put you because you're beautiful. It's over there. But it's, it's, it's this beautiful thing. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That needs to be governed. Needs to be governed. Needs to be what? Needs to be led. If you don't let that. That beautiful thing can destroy you. But it is beautiful. But you need to control it. Your mind, your mind is beautiful. But if you don't control your mind, your mind starts to think all the crazy thoughts. And suddenly you have fears. And now you're thinking, I'm going to die. And it ain't never going to happen. But what? See, it's, it's, it's amazing, this part. But this part needs to be under control. And the best way to do it is... By, by what? By the Bible. No, listen. By reading the word of God. Amen? By staying in the prayer. The more I read, Simon, the stronger I get. Are you with me? You come to the spirit. He comes to the rescue. Okay? So now, <laughs> don't hurt my wife. <laughs> Don't hurt my wife. So, he has the right to hurt her. Not only him. I know, I'm just kidding. No. But now, if they pull, what's going to happen? Who's going to win? Well, let's practice a little bit without torn her apart. Pull. 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 Pull, pull, pull. Ah. So, what's happening? Listen, sooner or later, Stephen, the flesh, has to what? Give in. Have you ever seen like somebody, I don't want to praise. I'm not going to pick up my arms. You crazy? I don't even have deodorant. No. Why? No. But the more they come closer to are you with me? The more he becomes under submission. The soul starts to influence. Now, bring him your arm. Give me your arm. You start to influence and you, the soul will start to bring the flesh under submission of all of them. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Give them a hand clap as they go down. Thank you. Do you understand how it works? That's why David said, praise the Lord, my soul. My inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. 
you want to know one of the ways, you want to know one of the secrets to remember to your soul, your God? Okay, you don't want to know, I just told you nobody. You want to know yes or no? Hear the secret. Bring to memory the things that God has done for you. Are you with me? Bring to memory because the God that helped you in the past is the same God today and it will be the same God tomorrow. Come on, you better praise God if you understand what I said. My friends, I'm a morning person. It says over here, look at what it says. Praise the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Oh, that's a benefit. Who is the one that forgives my sins? Jesus. Amen? Who heals? Who heals all your disease? Did anybody used to and then you came to Christ and he healed you in the past? Anybody, anybody raise your hand? Oh, three people and the rest, like, they were like super cool and everything, okay? Disease. Okay, but you have sickness. Anybody have sickness and you got healed? Yeah, okay. That's what I'm talking about. Who redeems your life from the pit that crowns you with love and compassion, with favor? Who satisfies your desire with good things, with favor, so that your youth is renewed like ego? Have you ever seen somebody that before God, their appearance, it was appearance of somebody that was dying? And then suddenly they become Christian. It like almost got removed like five to ten years, almost more from the face. Of the, have you ever seen that? And they ask, what's wrong with you? How many of you already people asking you, what's wrong? Why are you so joyful? What's wrong with you? Anybody? It's the renewing. It's the renewing. Look at me. It's the renewing. Amen. The spirit is overtaken. I see some of you when you came for the first time. And I see you now. You look so different. There is a lady in the Spanish church. That's, that's the best example that I can always have. This lady came and when I for the first time, have you ever seen somebody that like, with, with anger and bitterness? And, yes or no? I remember this lady. To hear so like bitterness and pain. And God came to her life. You will see her today. You won't recognize the lady. Not only change the way she dressed, her appearance, her physical, but how many believe that when the soul is okay and is controlled by the spirit, then it starts to manifest even in the way you say hi to other people and the way you smile towards life. And how many know what I'm talking about? So, Pastor, what are you talking to me? I'm telling you that your worship is connected to all this. You must learn that you have to wake up and worship. Live and worship. Go to sleep and worship. Why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy to be worshipped no matter what. He's worthy, my friends. Amen? My friends, how many of you are early birds? In other words, you wake up in the morning and you, 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 you're a morning person. Anybody? Okay, not everybody. I'm a morning person. My wife is completely different than me. And my son too. They, they will be happy if I let them sleep until 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. Or oh, they, they will think it's heaven. Are you with me? My daughter is more like me. The moment, listen, I don't know if it, it happens because you're getting older. But you go to sleep because you're tired. But wake up because you're tired of being in bed. How many know what I'm talking about? It's like your body cannot handle it no more than certain hours. How many know what I'm talking about? Don't laugh for me. You will be like that in a few days, in a few years. Okay? How many know what I'm talking about, right? But this is one something that happened. I told you before that when I wake up in the morning, I every morning ready to praise God. Nobody's like that. But I have disciplined myself to what? To stand up and worship. Before my first step, I'm already singing to God. How can you be like that? Because I have learned to discipline. I have learned to speak to my soul. Every time I wake up, my soul is like, stay longer. My soul is like, you had a rough day yesterday. Pamper yourself a little bit longer. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I speak to my soul. I say, yo, wake up, soul, and worship the living God. Amen? The fact that I can open my eyes, my friends, like this. It's a gift from God. If nothing else, I start praising God because I can open my eyes. I start blessing His name. Then, 
then it's time to move my body. What are you talking about? See, not everybody is young. Yeah, some of us we have to say, "Yo, legs," and the legs. Are you there? Because you don't feel them. You know, when you're getting old, you don't feel them, and then they start to move, and blood goes to your feet. Oh, they're there, they're there. Praise the Lord. And then you say, "Are you guys ready to function?" And they go like, "Uh, uh, uh." But and then you speak to your body, say, "Come on, you've been created to worship God." Amen. And you speak to your soul. You speak to your soul. So I wake up every morning, and you know what? I'm a morning person. I bother my family. They don't want to wake up. You know what I do? I do this. I, 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 got, I go through different seasons. But this season, you know, the last, actually, I got about three months doing this or more. But the moment I wake up, I do this. And I go. And I go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And my friend, I start to wake up. And my, and my wife, leave me alone, please. And I go, Gladys. My son, I go, Jonathan, wake up. He's like, ah. And suddenly my, my, my daughter starts to wake up. And then it's, she, goes to my, she goes to the back and we start to go, whoo, whoo, whoo. You see, but you got to decide who you do. I mean, you got to decide what you do. You got to decide who you're going to be. I have made the decision. Listen, life is too rough. Listen, sometimes I don't even stand up. I don't even fucking okay, express. I'm human like you. Sometimes I'm not even stepping out of my house when the attack already is there. But I have made the decision. I'm going to praise the king of kings. I'm going to worship God. All is not doing it right. I'm going to command my soul that don't forget what God has done. And when you start to think and all the things that God has done, you got to him i speak to my soul look so you got in a crampy attitude but who healed you in the past okay so who was the one that healed your son who was the one that provided you who was the one that forgave you who was the one that has been with you all the time and my soul goes i better come under submission because he's it's too much that's lapping how many know what i'm talking about and she comes under submission and she starts to worship god and nothing is more beautiful please come because I forgot to do this. She's the soul. Remember, she's the soul. And nothing is more beautiful than when, see, when the soul comes in unity. See, nothing is more beautiful than when this happens. No and Stephen, come, come. Body comes under submission, and then suddenly the spirit is like excited. Come, spirit! Oh yeah, he's excited. He's excited because everything came under submission. Gonna give a hand clap to God, everybody. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys. You see, you say, ah, come on, pastor. Is that simple? I'm telling you, it's that simple. I just give you the secret. I just gave you the secret to be in worship no matter what. Do you want to be blessed by God? How many want to be blessed by God? Your blessings will be, I don't know, I, I know you don't like it, but your blessings from God will be determined by your worship that you give to the King of Kings in the good times and especially in the bad times. Are you with me? That's why you need to worship Him. You need to love Him. Listen, my friends, but you got to learn to speak to your soul. Because if you don't speak to your soul, the enemy is going to speak to your soul. That's why you got to speak to your soul. You got to command the soul what is supposed to be done. Because the soul, the soul is going to try to do what is wrong. The soul, look at me, always wants to get under the... I feel sad. You're looking for any excuse, the soul. For any excuse, the day is great. I feel kind of sad. How many know what I'm talking about? And then, 
right away, a phone call to Pastor Tony. Somebody's depressed. Pastor Tony, Pastor Tony, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I'm kind of depressed, Pastor Tony. Can I tell you something? Okay, I'm not going to tell you. Can I tell you something? Nothing wrong calling me. You know, I'm here to serve you. But the bottom line is, you don't need me. You know why you call me? <clears throat> you want to know why people call me when they feel depressed? Pastor Tony, I'm a little bit sad. Pastor Tony, I'm depressed. Can I talk to you? You know why they call me? Because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Look at me. You know why they, people like to call me? Because the only thing I do, I told them, I told them, listen, don't pay attention to the circumstances. God is greater than you. Listen, you are an overcomer. Listen, Christ is with you and by the Spirit. What am I doing? I'm what? I'm, what? I'm commanding to their soul. What? That God is greater than the circumstances they're facing. And because of that, they feel good. And they go, oh, thank you, Pastor Tony. I feel great. I'm a champ. Okay, praise the Lord that I help you. But I don't need to help you. In other words, I'm saying you don't need me. You don't need me. And I know it's crazy for a pastor to say that. Any pastor in any church will make any effort to try the, the people to understand that they need the pastor. I'm going to be very honest. You don't need me. The only one you need is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Word of God, my friends. You're going to give a hand clap to God. You better give a hand clap to God. You don't need me. Amen? Because everything I'm going to tell you when you feel depressed, when you feel like you're not going to make it, is right here. Because anything I say ain't not going to help. But everything that I'm going to say from here is going to produce what? Faith, joy, peace, understanding. So that's why I say, you don't need me. Most of the counseling will be suspended. Yeah, some people need counseling and we need to help. But it's very limited. Most of the counseling is you not taking charge over your soul. Take charge over your soul. Command the soul. Listen, I know life is rough. I know finances are not there. I know my children want to know nothing about. I'm not saying that we're going to be like blind to the reality. Yes, reality is tough. But Jesus, in the middle of the crucifixion, he was worshiping the Father. Now, I don't see nobody being crucified here right now. Are you with me? So what am I saying? If he was capable to worship the Father, even in the crucifixion. Don't tell me you can. Well, you don't understand what I'm going through. I'm being oppressed by the reality of where I live. You know what? I'm going to say, very nice. Get a life. Can I say it like that? You think you're going through hard times? Hang out with me for a day. Let me show you somebody that is having a way, way rougher than you. And those people, for whatever reason, they're worshiping God. How? They're commanding to their soul what kind of life they're going to have. For me, you know how I command to my soul? I'm a worshiper. So I need music. Remember? And the moment I wake up, I have no fear because I know who's in control. There's no limit to what you can do. Because it all belongs to you. Yes, it all belongs to you. I got it under control the whole thing. I'm playing. I'm playing. But I start slow, but you know what? Before I brush my teeth, oh, I'm the man. I'm the man. And I got to wake up. Jonathan, wake up. No, I'm just kidding, okay? But I'm a morning person. I know nobody's going to be like that. But what I'm trying to say is this. Don't let your soul. It's going to take a sacrifice. I don't feel like it. Look at me. Do you think that I feel like to come and do church? Okay, it looks like they don't get it. Do you think I like to come and do church every time? I just told you. Before I stand walk out of my house, a dog poo in front of my door. And I step in the whole poo of the door. I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is, the same poo that you deal with it is the same poo that I deal with it. I know. I know it's not nice to hear it. But what I'm saying is, are you ready? Are you ready? I have shoes to do this. The same situation you face it's the same situation I'm facing. Some of you are stepping in the thing and uh, life is so bad. You know what I'm doing? When I see the thing?
Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Amen. Are you getting it? Or when life and I'm not paying attention and life gets rough and I ah, nah, I just take my shoe and I go, you know what? I'm going to go wish I was shoes today and I'm going to praise the King of Kings and I'm going to praise the Lord of Lords. I'm not going to let the situation to stop me. Come on, you have to God if you understand the teaching. You have the authority to speak to your soul. Don't get stuck with the reality that you live in. Command to your soul who you're going to be. David said, you know what? Life is going rough, but I command to you to praise the Lord. But I don't feel like it. I command to you to praise the Lord. But I don't feel like it. I command to you to praise the Lord. And I command to you to praise the King of Kings. Come on, praise the Lord, my friends, right now. Stand up in your feet right now. This is so critical. Praise the Lord, oh my soul most being praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and forget not all his benefits who for sins? say jesus who forgives all your sins who heals all your disease who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with favor who satisfy your desires with good things so that you be renewed like my friends